So, exactly. some, some questions at the end of his talk. Thank you. Thanks, John. Oh, thank you. It is nice to be back, uh, sunny Southern California. I have the unenviable position of being right after lunch, which is a little bit difficult. Uh, Steve, thank you for that introduction. It sort of proves that I'm one of the examples of a CIO who cannot hold the job for very long. Um, so I've been around many uh, organizations, sort of circled the Portland area. I did my dissertation research at uh, Kaiser with uh, its EPIC implementation and was the CIO at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland and then Providence, which has a large uh, presence in Portland, and then now back at Legacy. What I want to talk about, as you mentioned, I uh, just started um, at Legacy about nine months ago. And so what I want to share are sort of my initial observations of, uh, sort of reflections of being a newly hired CIO. Um, I did not check with our legal office, but I did want to put a couple disclaimers into uh, my presentation here. Um, the most important one, I think, is that fourth one. Years. So Good Samaritan Hospital was founded by the Episcopalians on the west side of Portland and on the east side, maybe not to be outdone, the Lutherans built their hospital. In the mission of that, in the articles of incorporation for that hospital is the mission that they are to care for the suffering Swedes of the region. So we, we talk about that a lot in our organization. Legacy itself was formed, so Good Sam and Emanuel and then regional hospitals was formed as a system itself in the late 80s, early 1990s, um, as a series of consolidations and, and mergers. We have uh, two regional hospitals, where the, our Legacy Emanuel Hospital is the only burn center uh, between Sacramento and Seattle. Uh, we have a children's hospital and we have about 20 primary care clinics and about 45 clinics all across the region, if you know the Portland and Vancouver area. It's really our home. The, um, our mission is, as I said, our vision is to be essential to the region. Our, our mission is, our legacy is good health for our people, first focusing on ourselves, and our patients, our community, and our world. So similar to um, other missions. One of the distinguishing characteristics about legacy that um, I, I'm, I'm proud of, and we are proud of, is the health home model that many of you, uh, many organizations are now are, are adopting. All of our primary care clinics are certified in health home. Um, that is the direction we're going in terms of integrated team-based care. Uh, really triaging the patient, getting to know the patient and having a relationship that is not just episodic, but recognizing that some people are healthy and they just want to come in and out when they need to, but others have more um, long-term uh, conditions. And so um, putting that together and having more of a relationship that, uh, that spans time is, is center to uh, what we're doing. 
Let me talk about our, our electronic health record. About five years ago, right at this time, five years ago, um, the CIO at the time, who was also a physician, um, started the conversation at the organization around where are we going in the terms of electronic health record. OHSU, our competitor, had signed with Epic. Uh, Providence was still on its um, the systems they currently run and are replacing with Epic, but really decided to look at across the continuum, what is the electronic health record we need to uh, power that health home? What is the one that will span inpatient, ambulatory, outpatient, uh, and decided upon Epic? All of our facilities are now on Epic. We uh, began the project uh, in earnest in early uh, middle of 2008 did two years of design and build of that, and then about a 13-month process to roll it out. So we started at our Vancouver, Washington, a brand new facility called Salmon Creek, and then rolled it out to all of our, all of our uh, facilities. Um, unlike many EPIC projects, ours actually did come in under budget and early. So um, a, a testament to the people who came before me. I was not there at the time, but it's a great team of people who work uh, really hard. Uh, it is emerging as the community standard uh, for, uh, for hospitals um, in the Portland uh, area and in the whole region. The Pacific Northwest is really epicenter, um, and uh, we're glad to be part of that. Um, we, like everyone, we signed Enterprise, so we have all modules uh, live. Uh, we don't have lab. Um, I was joking, we do a very large reference lab business at Legacy, and uh, Epic really isn't mature enough for that. But I've joked with our pathologist that the first data point in Beaker when we go live will be his autopsy. So he realizes that he will have to be dead for us to run, and we'll do his autopsy in Epic Beaker. Um, Legacy has celebrated a series of firsts in the community, and first with Epic. We were an early adopter of Cardiant that is now called Cupid, the, the, the cardiology element of EPIC, uh, and anesthesiology, the model build. If you have uh, uh, succeeded in going on EPIC after us, we were uh, instrumental in creating what is now the model build for EPIC anesthesiology. We're implementing home health right now, focused on our hospice line of business. Uh, we worked with Epic on the history of present uh, illness and uh, using scribe stats to help with implementation. So a lot of, a lot of firsts in our organization. Um, we consider ourselves good. Well, we consider ourselves great and excellent, but Epic says we're good um, in giving us a check for about half a million dollars for a good install uh, implementation. Um, I love this model. project altogether, so 500,000 is a little bit. Um, but it was like, wow, we got 500,000, and we got a big check. The CFO had this big check in his office. Um, but we had about 6%, so it was a pretty high uh, result. So it's a nice, nice uh, again, external validation of what we're doing. And we just were awarded, just uh, last month, got the, uh, the uh, notification formally that uh, we are on good maintenance program. So again, that's about... Um, a little over $200,000 a year. Now we spend about $300,000 a year sending people to EPIC to get certified and UGM that, to uh, maintain this, but uh, again, EPIC puts incentives for you to be good at their software. Uh, Carolyn mentioned um, the, the uh, HIMSS Level 7 that they have achieved and a great achievement we'll be putting in for HIMSS Level 7 that requires a site visit. Uh, but we uh, have been identified as uh, stage six. There are only 369 hospitals stage six uh, in the U.S., and there was, only, uh, uh, there, were, there was only four in Oregon until we made it eight with our uh, going live. The last thing in, by way of introduction to legacy I want to talk just briefly about is the, a legacy of leadership in transition. And what this slide shows, I, because I'm a CIO, I protected the name of the, of the um, well, they weren't really innocent, but um, of the CIO turmoil. But Legacy's had six CIOs in, this, in as many years. So in the last six years, we had six. So we had one whose, ter whose tenure was 18 years, including at the end of his tenure serving as the interim CIO, CEO when that CEO left. A new CEO came in probably didn't like the competition from someone who had been an interim and let him go. The VP of IT, so he's the senior VP and CIO, the VP IT became an interim, 
And that CEO was let go by the board, and so there was the CFO became the interim, and they hired a physician who became the CIO, who was in that job for three years, and then the new CEO, who the board brought in, terminated him. They brought in a finance VP who hated IT to be the interim CIO. It was a difficult time for the department. Um, they hired a new CIO who came in for 14 months and then he was terminated. And the CEO then brought in a third. So I thought, unless I run over a patient in the parking lot, that CEO is not going to let me go because he just went blood on his hands. So f since March, I came in as interim because um, they wanted sort of a 90-day uh, catch and release. Uh, and now I'm non-interim. I, I just, as I was doing the slides, I said, I'm not going to be permanent because you'd say it doesn't make sense. So what I have come in to work with a fabulous team of 300 people, part of it is just dealing with this turmoil. So the first work I worked on is healing this very tumultuous period, six CIOs in six years. This is just, and, and I t you, we all share, we're all in this business. Hospitals will live and die. Patients will live and die by the quality of the work that we do in health IT. And now that we're on Epic, Epic goes down, you know, we're, we're, we're risking the very viability of our company. That tumultuous leadership is, not sustainable. It has really, uh, I think, an important uh, potential impact to the organization. I hold that. We all hold that. And I love this morning's speaker about decision making because I think that's so true. So what did I do? So my first 50 days, um, I just learned. I just listened. I was a sponge of information. So I want to share with you what I've done, and I'd love to hear your feedback and how you've approached these sorts of things. I did a couple of things. One, I just listened to the leaders. So each of the hospitals has a CEO, and we have uh, my, my peers of the senior vice presidents. And I just had onboarding meetings, and I asked them a simple question, and I'll share with you what they said. I did a survey of all the staff. I want to know, what are you, how are you doing? We do employee engagement. We, have, we use Connect, uh, Connexa, the, what we call My Voice. So, uh, and, the, and I came in in March, and in February, they had a layoff of the organization of 400 people, including 30 or 15 percent of IT had been laid off. So I came in not only six C CIOs in six years, but also a 30 person uh, uh, riff. Um, so I just needed to gauge the sense of the people. Remarkably, very resilient IT people. The managers really bore the brunt of all that transition and turmoil. And then my own assessment. So I asked the leaders, I sat down and said, if you come up with two words, tell me the, two, the first two words that come to mind when you think of IS. And the, most, the, first, one, the first meeting I had was battered and overwhelmed. <laughs> oh, wow, I left a job for this? Um, and so I said, okay, well, they had both positive and negative things. So I kind of, you know, we're, we're the Pacific Northwest, so clouds and rain and sun, so I kind of used this analogy of the good and the bad, or the cloudy or the bright. You need, for a rainbow, uh, you need both clouds and sun. So we had a number of things where, you know, shell-shocked, battered, broken, weak technology. Some other things that were just not our, you know, it's a complex environment. There's a lot of change and turmoil. But also some good things. Helpful, good people, well-meaning. Um, in prior years, not service-oriented, but we had what I think many consider a very extremely successful epic. A lot of what I heard from the, the organization was we did epic right. We, the organization, resourced it, funded it, had executive leadership. It was not an IT project. Clinical folks took the accountability. I mean, it was really well done. And everyone said, we want that epic success to be the new normal for IS. Please make that the new normal. As I mentioned, we did a sur I did a survey of IS, you know, Zoomerang sent it out and asked a couple of questions. Interestingly, in this, uh, you might not be able to see it, but uh, proving to me that basically we, um, we reflected, we got a good uh, reflection. So about half of the staff, 137 people um, uh, submitted the results. And in general, they, this reflects where we are. So technology infrastructure is about half of our, a quarter of our staff, a quarter of respondents. And applications folks, um, about 40% of our staff, 40% of respondents. So the, the, we weren't overwhelmed by any one of the disciplines in our organization. 
So I asked a couple questions. I said, first of all, how do you think we are in meeting our current needs of the organization? And overwhelmingly, people really said, I think above average. Today's needs, I think we do in an above average way. Then I said, how do you think we are positioned to meet future needs of the organization? And we were a little bit more skeptical. We were a little bit more, uh, we're not as, not as positive in our thinking about the future. And then I said, how do you think our customers view us? So you, the first two questions really us do we, about us, what do you think the customers think about us? And that was very negative. Really a lot of, um, you know, the average being now into the below average uh, and average. And so I asked a number of questions. So I said, what are the strengths? Give me the two words about strengths. And so it was an open-ended question. And so what I did, what this reflects, and I, I, I love this view. So I, I, um, this, this way of displaying data, I did not do it. I, uh, a, a consulting company um, that I had worked with had done this on another survey, and I thought it was such a cool thing. So the size of the font is how often it was mentioned. So just a really quick, great visual way to say, overwhelmingly, the people said, our strength is our people. And when you take the other characteristics there, like teamsmanship, professionalism, commitment to excellence, customer focus, it's all about the people. We have people, when I did one of our first all hands meeting that had happened, uh, my predecessor had put in a, a, a team, it's sort of like Epic, you know, Epic has, you know, Judy brings together the 5,000 people who work at Epic every month. We bring together the 225, uh, it was every Thursday morning, um, everyone in the department comes together for an hour and it was called all hands. I changed the name to all hands, heads, and hearts because I want more than their hands. Um, and uh, we talked about this, and one of the first ones I asked about the tenure. So how many people here have been here like 20 years or more, 15 years or more? Uh, so just sort of get, gauging the, the group. And what was remarkable is that basically the department was bisected, that half of the people had 15 years or more at Legacy, and half the people had five years or fewer. There was something happened, it was like we went, we went to war in, the, in, the, in five, eight years ago, and I think the war was, of course, epic. We had decided to do a different vendor and move, move beyond, decided not to go that path. And so I think a lot of people who had not had a lot of tenure left at that time. So the people and a diversity of a mix of nurses and pharmacists and IT professionals um, had a lot to, really a, a focus of strength. You can, you'll have the slides and you can take a look at this, but I thought there were some really evocative stories, things that people said, and I, of course, will not read this, but um, they, we, there were lots of great language, great concepts that came out in the survey about our strengths. What were our weaknesses? The LO means lack of, and again, the visual is the bigger ones. Uh, the lack of professional development and training. We spent very little, I, I radically changed that. Um, silos between our groups, so revenue cycle people and the Epic Care folks and DBAs, and you know, we, we all deal with that. The lack of vision or strategic direction, the lack of resources. It didn't come up as much. You'd think that you know, people would, would talk about that, but it was really more um, prioritization became a very strong um, area. I like this one here. I, I, I love this statement. So middle of the, almost middle, we need to get even better about filtering our priorities and our work. Not being able to say no to unrealistic requests. Unreasonable is fine and workable. It's kind of where we live in IT. But unrealistic is not. The answers, uh, small and large requests are uh, soon, you know, sh sure, how soon do you need that? Rather than saying, here's a suggestion, this is when we can work on it. So a lot of issues just around the saying no. Now, I presented this finding to our staff and I presented it to our leadership team. And it was interesting, the juxtaposition, our, our uh, legal counsel said, what strikes me is in that first slide of what your senior vice presidents, what your peers said, was it was the department of no. And what the IT people said is, you never say no. There's something weird about that. I mean, it's just complete different perception of that and so just, to name it is to start to solve it. When I asked about what are the barriers we need, um, outdating skills, trust issues, um, exaggerated desire to please everyone. <laughs> That's uh, an issue we all deal with. 
uh, work, workload volume stress um, are the barriers. And again, some of the language. Prioritization, consistent leadership, obviously, six, yeah, six years um, has an issue with that. So I finished with two things that I want to, uh, I want to finish that assessment with were, what are the phrases or words you want? So as I asked our executives, what are the two words that come to mind when you think of IS? What do you want them to be? And I thought this was, I mean, there's, there was, I think the theme I'd like you to take away from this first, my, you know, half of the tenure I've had there was a team that was really healthy and hopeful, that was wanting to move forward. So, so that and, you know, what are the, what are the phrases you'd like them to, I like that um, takes a beating and keeps on ticking. <laughs> um, that we're indispensable to what the organization does. Um, oh my God, it's not a black hole anymore. Um, the team recognized the issues that we have in our customer service and approach. And so um, that, that has been wonderful. So the change has been really helping with prioritization, helping with organizational structure that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to next. So then I did my own sort of SWOT analysis um, and continuing with that rainbow cloud lightning sun themes. Um, the strengths really is our people. We have an informatics department of about 45 people, five physicians, 40 um, uh, allied health and nurses, mostly nurses, uh, some pharmacists. Um, extremely um, good, well-developed informatics staff with uh, specialty user groups that really define, they own Epic. They tell, they tell us what the priorities are. We build it, that's an IS function, but it's really driven by our informatics group. Um, and you'll see in the organization that now reports to me. Uh, Epic is a strength. The reliability of our systems are a strength. Um, knock on wood. The weaknesses, certainly team instability. We have a fairly new management staff, both in terms of new in being managers and new in the roles. Um, my predecessor had pretty much uh, fired 50% of the management staff while he was there for the 18 months. Um, a lot of inward focus of our, of our organization and then under investing in ourselves, in our training. What are the opportunities? A cultural change, a service and project management change. What are our threats? Uh, nimbleness, agility. Um, that's a difficult thing for IT as well. We sort of treat all requests or all projects the same with the same level of, you know, if we do it wrong, people are going to die, like SharePoint, you know. Uh, methodical release time on SharePoint changes. Uh, we could maybe relax it a little bit. We were, we were abs astronomically anti-cloud based uh, anything, anything external. Um, an extremely uh, restricted uh, browser and uh, security, very, very restrictive security environment. Um, so things that I have, I have changed. Let me tell you about what we're doing from uh, uh, team, so, so that was the first 50 days. I, I worked, um, one pearl of wisdom, again, not mine, but one that I've lived by. One of my first jobs in the VA um, as a chief, so as a, what we would now call a sort of a, a facility-based CIO, uh, was here in Southern California, the San Fernando Valley, uh, called Sepulveda VA, the one that fell down in the last earthquake uh, when I was there. Um, the, the CAO, I'm trying to remember, so uh, the, the uh, basically uh, head of administration, so you know, the CEO of the hospital, they all have different titles in the federal government, but um, basically the CEO of the hospital and my boss when I came, and I was a brand new department director, heading IT for this, for this hospital, and he said, John, I know you're going to want to bring to me an organizational chart. You're just here. I, I know you're going to want to change the organization. I will not authorize you to do it for a year. And it's like, oh my God, I have one in my back pocket, my first meeting. I mean, I've already kind of organized, I've started to reorganize. He's like, you gotta meet the people, you gotta know the people, you know the skill set. I mean, I was new, you know, uh, up and coming, um, excited to be chief, you know, had been a, an assistant chief up in Palo Alto, had all these ideas, but I had a boss who, um, you know, said no to things. And so, oh, now I'm the boss, I can do what I want. And, and he said, well, you're not the boss, I'm the boss, and I work for somebody, and the president is really ultimately the boss, which means the American people are the boss. Uh, 
And, and it was great advice because what, it was funny. I took, put that away, he said, put it in a drawer. He said, if there's anything that you think in the way we're structured that puts us at risk as an organization, yeah, make those changes. But if it's just where we want to go and how we want to organize for the future, hold on it, wait, wait. And I did, and I waited a year. I was mad, I was mad. I was like, okay, I thought I would be the you know, master of my own domain. And um, waited a year, and I, the organization that we ended up with was different than what I would have done as a textbook. We all know we work in people, this is people organization. So what strengths they have and all this sort of thing. And it was the greatest advice. And so for the first four or five months, um, six months at, at Legacy, I did nothing around the organization. I listened, I talked to people. Uh, we had a retreat and I, we made the brand. You see the brand of Legacy is this, is this. And the brand here is made up of team photos of every team to come into our brand. We are part of what legacy is. So where, where we were organized at the time, we had two vacant director positions, only one is on this org chart. We made it, we, we, we had it there, but we didn't know what we were gonna do with it. We have a CMIO and a CNIO, a fabulous talented individuals that worked for the chief medical officer and the chief nursing officer, uh, respectively. And then we had basically ambulatory and inpatient. And over the course of that time, I uh, made some changes. I um, uh, removed our security professional and um, took on the mantle of Chief Information Security Officer in addition to being CIO. That might be temporary, but at least it's where we are right now. Um, I outsourced the role uh, of security officer because we're, we're such a small organization, we couldn't subspecialize. And I thought getting that from a, a vendor that actually can bring me, you know, I have one FTE, but it's really made up of 35 people with different specialties. Um, or 30, you know, one plus 30, one who's pretty much on the ground all the time. Um, in collaborating with the chief nurse officer and the chief medical officer, we moved informatics into this department. So it's IS and informatics as one, one leadership team. The role of the CIO and uh, CMIO and CNIO is one that can't go native either way. I mean, I absolutely respect their independence. So we, 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 we love the, I think the tension is healthy for our organization. They report to me, but they're also um, my boss in many ways because the clinical enterprise is really driving where we're going. Um, their point was we go meet with the CMO and the CNO and they don't really know what we're talking about. They don't know what our priorities are. You do, let's work with you. Um, so other, other minor changes, the organization basically looks like this. We have about, um, um, about 275 folks, and I've, I said earlier this year we put in a, um, we riffed about 30 positions, and, and our budget year is April to March, uh, and so we're in the process of beginning our, our uh, fiscal year 2013-14 plan, and I put in a request for 30 positions, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. The other thing I did for the organization is we got the line authority. Um, as I said earlier, we're a meeting rich, decision poor culture. And I can't control what we do, like my, the executive councils. Every Wednesday, mor Wednesday morning, I'm in about three hours of meetings. Tuesday morning, it's SVP, executive council, senior management council. Same players, same topics, it's mind numbing. And I said, well, I can't, I can influence that, but I can control what we do in IT. And so we restructured, um, and this is a model, again, I think it's highly creative. I, I uh, stole it from when Providence reorganized its management structure, and I thought the visual was really cool um, to get very easy to see how we're organizing. So not only do we have the line authority, so if you're the data center manager, you're responsible for the operations of the data center, but we gotta work together as teams at breaking down silos, and so what we put into place is basically my kitchen cabinet of my direct reports that's the executive council. But we've named, what do we take to, the exec, to my leadership team different than the management group? And the management group then is also segmented into these four areas, kind of splitting the IS responsibility horizontally and vertically. So vertically, we have an application council and architecture council manages our application portfolio and manages our systems and standards. And horizontally, everything we do in IS could either, generally, could be divided into keeping the lights on and doing service for what we do and bringing new technology and new projects into the organization. So we have a project management council, 
that looks at our project management methodologies and standards, and we have a service management council that is implementing idle and um, service uh, improvements. Uh, some of this stuff was already in place and going. Uh, again, I didn't bring all wisdom to the organization. By no means would I even be that talented. But there was a great talent pool there, and what we did is just authorize them. Go, go with the Enterprise Architecture Council. You know, it's a great idea. Put in the change management structure that we need to have. Um, kind of giving them the proceed until apprehended, and it's safe to make mistakes. I think that was the fear in our organization with the turmoil and the, and the, the terminations of a lot of people were, I, I, I don't want to take a risk because I'll be terminated. And I, I want to set a culture that the opposite is, uh, is actually the case. Let me talk a little bit about strategic planning and, and uh, what we're doing in terms of our projects and our focus areas, which is very similar to what you would do. The one thing that, um, I, and I've kind of gleaned this over a, a short period of time, the attention span, if you've heard, there's some study that says basically if you hear something one time, you know, you don't remember it until you hear it seven times. And so everything that we're doing and publishing in IS out to the, like to the uh, IS Governance Council that I've uh, reconstituted, um, everything is in this format, everything. So the projects we're working on, our project dashboard, this format. We are under budget, one and a half million dollars, uh, mostly from uh, maintenance contracts and vacant positions. Um, when we announced the layoff, people were scared that they were, we announced a layoff, but we didn't say who. Worst Christmas ever. Um, and then announced the 30, but the people who had been there, you know, a few years that had talent, had walking skills, uh, started looking because they're like, I can't be without a job. And so we actually lost more, 10 more than the 30 RIF because of people who, in the hint of RIF, started the process of interviewing and looking and got great offers and left. And so um, we are reinvesting um, in special initiatives. And I'm keep using these things. So it's really EHR and the related uh, HIE revenue cycle, but it's EHR, ERP, and BI. And those of you in this audience, the only audience I speak to that would understand those, you know, six, those uh, eight words and know what that means and know that it means, you know, $300 million. Um, so we are, we're doing a lot with enabling the intelligent hospital. Carolyn, if I could come visit, I would love to. I saw you had real-time location services on your radar screen. Um, we're, we're doing a lot with the integration of phones and, and uh, uh, nurse call systems and, and the Philips monitors. And I mean, these nurses are jingling <laughs> all the time. Um, so all the stuff we're trying to do around the intelligent hospital engaging the healthcare community are focus areas for us. One of the other things I did visually, um, the, the, uh, the box, the sort of spider diagram, is our one page visual of legacy strategy. And what I did to send our IS governance into the board was to put underneath those, the, the exist, I mean, the, everyone has seen this, it's posted in a lot of places, our 2020 ambition is to be an integrated delivery network that has these eight strategies that circ circumnavigate that center of the development of an integrated delivery network. Uh, and I put the IS, what are we doing in IS to achieve all of those so that they are familiar with that. Uh, you know, I didn't want to use a different model. I didn't, it's communication, uh, uh, simple communication and kind of putting what we are doing uh, to that. The other thing I've communicated, um, we did a 2012 upgrade this year. We're doing just a lot of, a lot of work. We're, we're doing a core Lawson uh, implementation. We're going to Lawson on the cloud. So we're going to go to Amazon. And uh, we're of the size that that can happen. So we're um, uh, outsourcing that. And a uh, uh, good, good, little bit of fear within my organization. It's like, oh, we're going to outsource all of IS. Um, and other things. But the one thing to say, the job number one for our organization, job number one for IT is keep the monitors glowing or keep the lights on, whatever word you want to use. It is to keep the existing system, number one. That's at risk, all other projects stop, we go to job number one. And then we're doing the number of initiatives internally, as I mentioned earlier, project management methodologies, uh, idle, um, things that were underway before I got there, but I'm continuing to propel forward. 
what I want to end on and then open for any questions are just sort of my reflections for um, of being there now nine months um, and uh, the important role that we play as leaders in our organization. I think the most important thing that I do, the, the, my most critical function is to build a highly performing, highly engaged staff. Number one thing. And get the money. So uh, I didn't put money there, but arguing and being able to, to speak convincingly about the resources we need to do our job is another one. But building an engaged staff, so having all hands, heads, and hearts. A few of you who are consultants who have come to uh, Legacy to try to sell me know uh, that, that when you come to Legacy to sell me, you have to come to all heads, hands, and hearts and do a presentation to all 300 staff. So part of the get in the door to come in to meet with the CIO is present to all of our staff. Uh, and they love it. We've had Judy Faulkner out. We've had a great consulting from Impact Advisors. We've had certified data. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. Um, and organizational structure. So not only the individuals being engaged and hopeful, but a structure that facilitates that. And my, my reflection is take time to do that. Don't do that too soon. Listen non-defensibly, and I put a caveat to myself um, about will that last. One of the things that's been wonderful, my honeymoon period is going to talk to the Salmon Creek uh, family practice who hate Epic. They hate Epic. And I go, it's like your family, it's primary care, it's I like Epic sweet spot. The way we customized uh, the Epic Care Ambulatory, they hate it. And so I went and I just listened and I didn't, you know, they're like, oh, no, you know, you're the first person who has come, first IS person who has come, who hasn't just started arguing with us and why we're wrong. And I left that and I reflected and it's like, oh God, I am so good. And then I realized, you know, I, I listened non-defensively because I didn't create the problem. I don't, oh, I don't have this sort of maternal feel. Um, now when we're doing Explorus as a, as a analytics tool that is, has my fingerprints all over it. I mean, it is my brainchild. I'm, pushing my organization to, to, to do it. So when I have the physicians meeting, they're like, whose damn idea was that? That question <laughs> earlier. Um, I'm, I want to remember to listen non-defensively. So um, that has been an interesting, so my reflection of this time, and thank you for having me come, because I, uh, it gives me the opportunity to sort of reflect on what I learned is that needs to last. The ability to listen to complaints, not take it, per you know, listen to the signal versus noise. Listen to the signal, ignore the noise, and take, take heart. I, I want to keep as a skill set, uh, not one that I uh, do very well. And so it's been easy coming into a new organization, because I, I don't have that sense of, uh, I have a sense of ownership and pride and trust in the people, but not and cause that. The other one that I think is part of that saying no, part of the black hole, the department of black hole, is this one of service and accountability. We have issues with both management and staff, the problems with I'm listening, I understand, I got it, I'm either gonna solve it or I'm gonna, I mean some things I get, you know, why are we doing security on email going outside? You know, we use good on our, you know, mobile device, bring your own device, why do you do that? Well, and I, we don't want it. Well, I'm not gonna solve that. I mean, it's a, it's a bad, ugly world out there. Um, both regulation as well as true risks to the integrity of our data, we're going to put security on. You don't like it, you know, but it is what we have to do. Let me, it, let me talk to you about it. Let me tell you why we do what we do. So I'll solve it, but some things cannot be solved, like anything the federal government does. Um, but that culture of service and accountability, I think, is one that I want to drive. Transparency of both flaws and successes. we we um, not necessarily very good about that marketing the successes. So, you know, we have transparency, but we should, you know, we went from one project success onto the next and pause and really talk about what we've done for the organization. Healthcare 2012 in the United States cannot exist without us. So our goal of world domination is now true. So, which leads to the last point about humor. Humor has been a nice way for me to uh, talk to the board, to work with our, our leaders and just kind of, it's, it's, um, it's serious business that we do, but we need to enjoy how we, how we do it and have a passion and, a, and an enthusiasm. Uh, I'm proud to be at Legacy and have this time, uh, however long that is. Um, 
I'm hoping it's uh, longer than <laughs> the last four, um, but um, time will tell, you know, one inflated expectation. I joke about it, we, we, um, last kind of comment, um, um, we have a policy, so our lovely security people put a policy in place that said you must have complex passwords. But they put the policy in without talking to the Active Directory people who didn't program it. So our external audit came and said, you have a policy that says complex passwords and a practice that doesn't do it. So we're going to put it into place. Talk about, <laughs> this is next year, first six months of next year. Telling every physician, you're now going to have to change your password to, you know, uppercase, lowercase, equals. You know, if they're doing internet banking, which most of our physicians um, spend more of their time doing internet banking than Epic, <laughs> so they'll be used to it. So use the one that you use for, you know, your Fidelity account in our Epic. Um, but I joked that, you know, that's there's a CIO killer right there. But um, so anyway, those are my reflections. Thank you for letting me come down and share. I would thank you. As I said, now and at the panel, we have like five minutes for. But and also at the panel, I, I welcome thoughts on, uh, you know, or afterwards or Jay Kanagi at LHS.org. I'd love to hear. This is kind of the journey I'm taking. I'd love to hear other people's thoughts. quickly um, say that I'm from the Portland Vancouver area and would absolutely go nowhere but the Salmon Creek facility. Good to hear. We have the trauma center whatever the, when the president comes to Portland he comes to our uh, well we hope he doesn't need to but they are <laughs> they are set and, and the EMTs have tattooed take me only to legacy. That's, that's a nice place. Even though I've been at all the competitors of them. Well, thank you. Anyway, we have time at the panel. So, th oh, yeah. John, thank you very much for sharing. The one of your challenges up there was silos and breaking down silos. Was that how, how did you really solve that issue or, or address that issue? Was that part of the councils and who who who's heading those councils? So the council has an executive sponsor. So one of our one of our the directors um, sponsors each of those. It's a manager or a team lead that is the responsible uh, sort of coordinator. In all of those, the, every one of the councils is a mix of staff and management, so it's not just the staff. So our PMO is part of the project management council, our team leads are part of the service management. Silos is a big problem. Geography is the worst issue. You probably saw that, it wouldn't make sense to you, but you know, we're, we don't have a size enough building for the administrative staff, so we have rent space. So our data center is five blocks away, and our revenue cycle people are in a different location than I am, and that sense of, you know, um, well, you who are in, you know, it's, the, the address of that building is, is uh, there's 1919 and the other one is uh, uh, 1220. And so, it's the shorthand. Well, you know, those people in 1919, if they would just not tell us to do it, say, okay. So, the, and then the different, you know, Epic is very large, you know, we've got 65 people working on it, but they're in their departments, so HIM is a silo from, you know, op time uh, OR. You know, how are we breaking that down slowly? Um, some of it is just working together and getting people, getting people together. The physical barriers, the f I mean, if I could do one thing um, right now, I would put all of the IAS people together. I, I would move us all um, so that we didn't have the physical barrier. And I can't look at Dick uh, from Providence. I mean, can't do that across, you know, 26 hospitals from Anchorage to LA. But in in the Portland area, we really could, and I, I think that that's that's a huge barrier to uh, to our, our uh, working. Yes, uh, you had mentioned that professional development was not on the radar when you arrived. That that was one of the uh, issues with the staff. Uh, can you just summarize what kinds of uh, programs that you put into place? I can really fast. Three key areas, maybe a fourth one being actual education. The first one is we had, uh, over the course of the last three years, canceled our subscriptions to the advisory board and Gartner, any kind of external um, research. And people could talk about whether that's really valuable or not. Um, and, and I'm finding it now. So the one thing we did, we became a HIMSS organizational affiliate. So everyone in 
um, our organ, and not a lot of money, but every IT person now is a member of HIMSS and can get access to all the HIMSS material. So sort of the first thing was these professional organizations. The advisory board, unlike Gartner, Gartner, which is a seat, good, good group, I mean fabulous group, and we have people who have seats. The advisory board has a, you do it as a group, so we have a lot of access to that. Second one, um, we are working with the people in our community. The VP of IT, who was that interim CIO, was very, um, very competitive in the market. Portland has been a very competitive market where Legacy and Providence and OHSU compete with each other. Our IT departments have hired from each other. Um, and so, you know, small market. And, and so there was this sense of, you know, let's don't collaborate or work, particularly at Legacy, particularly at Legacy, did not, did not collaborate. Well, I hired many of the people at OHSU and I worked with a lot of the people and hired many of the people at Providence. So personally, I, I really admire and, and love these people. And so we started doing across the community peer network events. So it's not like having to go to classes, it's just talk to colleagues. Um, we, we, the Hims Oregon had a conference about six weeks after I got there, and we sent 12 people to it. Um, it is the first time that Legacy had participated in a regional Hims conference in three and a half years. They're right there, and they're cheap. I mean, it's just so, there was just this kind of inward focus. The third one is really milk our, our vendors for as much education as possible. So um, we are re-participated in Lawson's in forum. We've been doing Epic because Epic makes it, Epic gives you financial incentive to go to their user group and their, and their, um, uh, their, their spring advisory meetings because you'll, you'll, you'll continue to get good maintenance. But, you know, we hadn't sent anyone to HP. Um, we, we've talked to vendors about, uh, our key um, vendor colleagues, about providing education or flying an expert in. Um, we're doing that with OnBase where, where Legacy is hosting a regional meeting of OnBase. We're going to give the space and open it to our colleagues at OHSU and MultiCare and Providence and have a great conference, educational for our staff and the community. And the vendors are, are, are um, really do it. I mean, it's, it's, so it's sort of just been not you know, sending everyone to a $15,000 course. Uh, um, it's, it's really kind of being creative and having the focus that professional development is important. Sorry, last question, and then. Um, is this on? Yep. Okay. Uh, just your style and going into what appeared to be kind of a mess, and you took the time to assess what's there by asking questions, and then you came up with a little of a game plan. Is it get, was it starting to get to the stage for you, and just as your work, other CIOs are here, where you could now, if you got a little bit other. Obviously, there's some things there's unknown to plan, but could you set up, a, if you want to use the term job stability, a metrics type thing that they and you agree to going forward? Not in the areas that I can't, you can't quantify, but at least in the areas you can quantify that would give them a real uh, good feel for, hey, we're, he's given us these five things to look at at the end of a quarter or six months. Oh, that's a, that's a great question. So the kind of benchmarking and accountability and of things that are measurable and, you know, it's remarkable. We are data, we, our job is to live in data, but I think we're really poor at the data on ourselves. At least I personally uh, have been. And so we work on, on um, friendliness and account my CEO likes me. Uh, and so I have a job rather than saying, here's what I've done for you. And this is, I mean, we do, we do publish um, uh, some metrics, but being more methodical about that and then being more transparent. That is one thing that I have gotten from Gartner. They have the CIO toolkit, which gives you, an, you know, the, the, they have a first hundred days. I mean, I did use that for a lot. It was a great reference from Gartner that, that was like, what do you look at when you're in your first hundred days on the job? Um, it's sort of the right three letters. Anyway, that's another story, um, another joke. But um, the, the, um, I would love to get much more methodical. When I had the opportunity, so I had this opportunity to leave my prior employer and was looking at new things. I've been a CIO for 16 years. And I said, do I really want one more gig? And I really thought about not doing that and actually kind of going into a, a consulting firm to talk about these sorts of things and put this into, into practice. Um, I have comments maybe at the panel around the CEO-CIO relationship that I think is 
it's, it's the most important one for the CIO's longevity um, and a, a potentially an extremely difficult one. And a lot of that is measures and metrics. I think we're still kind of, I mean, others may have, I don't have an answer to that. I think it's important. Without it, you're, you're really um, running as the wind blows and, and uh, winds can blow <laughs> the, the wrong way. So anyway, thank you for your time and attention. <clears throat> You hugged Carolyn. I mean, I. <laughs> oh, I guess. <laughs> um, Steve is here. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for flying down. This oh. was very helpful. And uh, you know, we try to. Uh, one of my goals is to expand our minds in various ways. So we had Tom Collins do that. I hope.